Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla and we're excited to have you here with us. Um, Before we jump into the word this morning, let's open up in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for the beautiful sunshine, Lord, and the nice song of the birds, Lord. And we thank you for being able to enjoy your creation and your animals, Lord. We ask that you will bless us this morning, Lord, with wisdom and understanding because you said get wisdom and in all are getting get understanding, Lord. So we ask for the wisdom and the understanding, the knowledge and the skill to apply this to our lives, Lord, and be successful through our day. We ask that you would minister to each and every one of us our needs, Lord, that you will show us things to come through your Holy Spirit that that you have freely given to us, Lord, and we oh so enjoy. And we thank you for those things, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. 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 Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you with us as we get into the Word and continue our study in the book of Hebrews. So we are in chapter 9, covering verses 23 through 28. And with that, whether it's your first time joining us or you are rejoining us, just want to encourage you to pause the episode and just take a little time to read through that section of scripture just so things are easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And as is our custom, the floor is now open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you might have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, LaCharles. And I'd like to begin by reading a scripture. This will be Matthew 27. And I'll start inside of verse 45. Now um, now from the sixth sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, (laughs) sorry, Uh, Sebastiani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the, ri- and the rocks were split. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and um, Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Okay. And how this will correlate to the scripture where we see, for Jesus has not entered, this is Hebrews um, 9 again, verse 24. For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. And just understanding, um, and I'd like to ask this question, um, why would Paul say this if, what occurred at Jesus's um, death that caused the veil to be torn in two? Say again, Re- rephrase your question for me, honey, or for us. Meaning that we see that Jesus didn't, um, Paul says he does, he did not go into the earthly version of it, but went into heaven. What caused the veil inside the earthly version to split in two? Are you asking so you can answer it? Do you want to tell us? Yes, I was asking so that I can answer. A rhetorical question. Okay. Okay. Answer, sweetheart. Yes. And how what we see here is, and this correlates to what we have been talking about. Um, We've been talking about how the things that occur in the spiritual um, eventually play themselves out inside the natural. Yes. The spiritual always first. Yes. The natural follows. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how what we see here is that it wasn't important for Jesus to go and do it in the physical inside the earthly realm, meaning that he didn't have to go through the veil to go sprinkle on the mercy seat that Moses had made. 
it was more important for him to go and do it inside of heaven because that's what the Lord wanted. And this goes back to our discussion of how this is a copy of a copy of a copy. Mm -hmm. This is not the original, nor is it the, um, even the peak of what it was at this point. Mm -hmm. meaning that what we see with Moses it was fresh the gold was probably clean mm -hmm. this has gone through a couple of sacking of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's been through quite a bit at this point and what we have to understand is that while um, Jesus fulfilled everything on site of his death and his resurrection and afterwards we have to understand that what God was referring to and what happened when he died was something that um, was inside the heavenly community first Meaning that he didn't go and cause those things to occur, like with the darkness on um, from the sixth to the ninth was not Jesus at all. That was very demonic. Meaning that when it was dark suddenly, okay, when Jesus was on the cross, uh -huh. mm. and just understanding that when Jesus went to go um, sprinkle his blood on the mercy seat that was inside of heaven, um, which is where the Ark of the Testimony is now, meaning the Ark of the Covenant, it says that the Lord took it back up into heaven. Um, and just understanding that while he was doing all these things and while we see it played out inside the natural, that's not what we should be looking for. Even inside of our own lives, like um, mommy and dad, you often tell us not to base our understanding on the situation that's playing out beforehand, but to understand it from God's perspective. Not Absolutely. saying, Lord, this is what's happening, Lord, so I need you to fix the situation, but understanding it from the Lord's perspective. Okay. Like what we see with Jesus, he didn't say, um, Lord, I think it's about time. It looks like these people are about to come and get me, like when he's about to be cast off the mountain, mm -hmm. um, the cliff, actually. Uh huh. He didn't have to call the Lord's attention to it in that manner, saying, Lord, you better do something quick, because these people, you know how crazy they are. He didn't mm -hmm. have to do that, but the Lord already understood exactly what was going to happen. He was basing what he knew off what had already occurred inside the heavenly realm, meaning that he knew it from God's perspective. He knew they couldn't do anything, not because... Um, he thought he was so awesome in that regard, but because he knew his time had not come mm -hmm. because that's what the father had stated and told him. Okay. Yep. Oh, honey, you had something you want to say? Yeah. Just, just to make it clear for the listeners, it's not that we can't report or relay to the Lord what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. You can look at the example in Jeremiah. He asked him some very, you know, very pointed question. What do you see? Right. And he says, oh, I see the rod of an almond tree in a boiling pot. Right? And he's like, oh, you see well. Now, just because he saw that didn't mean he had any understanding as to what was going on. But then you see how the Lord starts telling him and instructing him, right, of what that represents, what is happening behind it. All right? Yes. So just, just so people understand, it's not that you can't say, Lord, I see these things happening. But the bigger thing is, Lord, what do you say about these things that I'm seeing? So I can get your thoughts and your ways concerning them. So then you can receive instruction, uh, just like Jeremiah did, right, as to what to say and what to do. And by that, I mean what the Lord wants you to say and what the Lord wants you to do concerning it. Okay? Yes. Yes, Dad. Uh, yes, Jesus is the door. So he made the way, he tore the veil, which also signified a whole lot of other things, right? Before who could enter the Holy of Holies? The high priest. Once a year. Only if he kept all the commandments. Okay, there Otherwise you go. He would have died. All right, but yet now he tore, or now the veil is torn. But then, what does Peter say? And and others in other places, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right? A king, a, a nation of kings and priests before our our God. Mm -hmm. So now all can freely enter because now there there was, if you will, a, a firstborn, right? Christ is the first and the last. Mm -hmm. But we are now made joint heirs with Christ and now can all freely come before the throne of grace, right? Before our Heavenly Father, because he is seeing Jesus in and through us. Mm -hmm. And remember, Jesus is the great high priest, Amen. right? Amen. Yes. Not only is the, he the high priest, but he's also the maker of the tabernacle. He's the maker of the boundaries. So we have the mm -hmm. one who made it and created the boundaries and the one who said, now I'm going to obliterate those boundaries. And I say that you can all come in, right? So we have yes. both sides of that. And that has opened the door and made a pathway for us after we pass under the blood, right? Yes, going mommy. straight to the father and enjoying that one-to-one -one personal relationship with him freely, just as Christ does. I love that you brought that up about the boundaries because it's no different again we're spiritual, 
happens first, then natural. But in, in the book of Job, he says constantly, okay, so you tell me how this was done, how I said to the waves, come here, go no further. Mm-hmm. But then we also see when, well, a natural disaster occurs, but they still were given a boundary as to where they could go. Mm-hmm. And they so, have to recede back to it. And, and mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's the other, they have to go back to whatever the Lord set for them. And that can change as the Lord, you know, wills it. So just understanding those things. All right. Yes. So if he can do that with natural, again, a natural thing like water and the ocean, then he, then he can do that with both the spiritual and natural thing Mm -hmm. as in who can enter the Holy of Holies. So now that's, I think it's covered hopefully well enough for all, everybody, us and the listeners. Please continue. Yes, Dan, and it's all right to remind the Lord, as you said, that of what you're seeing, so that way we see that people inside the Old Testament, Elijah being one of them, he told the Lord, Lord, I'm about the only person left doing what you want. He, at least he thought he's the only mm-hmm. one left. This doing. perspective was incorrect. Yes, and how just understanding that while we are talking to the Lord does not mean that we are validated because the Lord listens, um, meaning that. It wasn't me, um, going back to the example of Elijah, when he called on the Lord, it wasn't because Elijah was right that the Lord acted in that manner, meaning that he caused the fire to come down on Mount Carmel. Um, Mount Carmel. It, it wasn't because Elijah was right and because he thought it was correct. It was because that's what the Lord wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And just understanding that as well is that all the things that we see inside the earth are not because we're calling the Lord to it and saying, Lord, you better do this or else. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be threatened by anything we can do we nobody can, can without do him we can do nothing he and, says and he's not threatened yes. by anyone who can look at him and say what have you done no one no who has advised him but mm-hmm. especially the prophets which we were a nation of kings and priests we're supposed to do what say what the lord says to say and do what he says to do just like our pattern example found in jesus the christ mm-hmm. or the messiah yes and understanding that as we are going throughout the earth and going through our lives, we should be saying what the Lord tells us to say inside of the situation instead of trying to command the Lord what we want to have done. Like what we see here, Jesus didn't say, Lord, you better let me get back into heaven. He was enacting what the Lord had told him, the Father had told him to go and do. It wasn't Jesus calling the shots, essentially. Mm-hmm. And while that kind of seems odd because Jesus is God, meaning that mm-hmm. Jesus, who was significantly above us because he was man and God at the same time, mm-hmm. and we're just man, understanding that while Jesus, Jesus submitted to that order, so we have to submit to the same order as well. Amen. It's kind of like um, an example of when you're staying in a line. You don't get to suddenly cut because you want to. That doesn't mean you get to go to the front of it because you're hungry. No, you have to stay in your position. And understanding that when the person who has made said line, um, meaning that the people in the example of going to get food, somebody may say the line starts here. That's where the line starts, Mm -hmm. not where you decide to start the line. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what Jesus did. He said, this is where the order is. This is how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And the father said that as well. And Jesus said, okay, I'm going to be inside of this order because that's how you said it. And understanding that we're not going to create our own line on how we want to get to the Father and say, Lord, you better accept this. Mm-hmm. That's a, that is, people have tried to do that throughout the entirety of Scripture, right? Yes. Well, we'll get to, uh, even in, in Babel with Nimrod. Oh, well, we'll get to heaven another way, mm-hmm. right? Make a name for ourselves. Make, we're exactly. Build this temple. But even, and so we started this and you brought up about talking and discussing perspective, right? And, and we gave the example of Jeremiah, but the people's perspective and what you read in Matthew was also incorrect. What were they saying? Hey, he's calling to Elijah. See if Elijah comes and saves him. Wait, Elijah is the one that relied on the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, then, and yes, it says he was coming, but Jesus also said about John the Baptist, if you can handle it, if you can, excuse me, if you can understand, this is Elijah, Right. It was declaring the name of the Lord. And what did John the Baptist say? Uh, Man, the one's coming who's a higher rank than I, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. Mm -hmm. Like that shows you the perspective is Elijah can't do anything without the Lord. All right, as he says, without me, you can do nothing. But the people were looking at something they had 
or looking for something they had read about in a person instead of looking at the spiritual thing and getting the Lord's perspective on the matter, Mm -hmm. right? I like your example that you gave about Jeremiah, Um, even though it was a vision that he was looking at, but from Jeremiah's perspective, he said, I see an almond tree. And in and of itself, what does that mean? Exactly. All right. Is it does it the time to grow crops, Lord? Uh, should I should I go harvest some almonds and make a salad? I mean, what right should I get the blossoms and make a necklace or a headdress out of it? And it's sitting here in a boiling pot. Like, and what does that mean? Is it is it dinner time? Cook the almonds in the pot? Right. You can we can look at things from our human perspective and we're totally off base, totally off the mark, right? Thinking the way we think by and using a natural mind that's been conditioned by sin, which does not have clarity or proper point of view or perspective. And we use that to try to interpret what we're looking at. And the answer that God said, like, yeah, you, you see these items listed truly, but here's what they actually represent. And it was the Lord ready, watching over his word and being ready to perform uh-huh. it totally. Like who would have gotten that from seeing an almond tree in a pot? Right, and, or and an what, almond blossom in a word? Pot. Who? The, there's the entirety of Scripture. These are all the words of the Lord spoken through through His servants. So, which word was He talking about performing? So that's why we need the Lord. Exactly. There's a whole entirety, and there are things that are written in heaven that we don't have account of necessarily here. The on secret the earth things, exactly. That are still God is. They're His things that He is absolutely carrying out, and will complete all of His word. So for us, just understanding that it's not about what we think God is, he means. It's not about what we think is being said or done or displayed, even when engaging in conversation or interacting with people around you, you can go, oh, I think they've got an attitude. No, they got a rock in their shoe and their foot hurts. Or, you know, they're thinking about getting through traffic and because they want to go see their mom who's in the hospital later this evening or right. But you look at their face and go, they're mad at me. They're racist. They're jealous of me. Right. And have all these ungodly and wicked interpretations when it has nothing to do with you. So if we can't even judge looking at the most basic things, why would we take our own opinion about anything? Especially the spiritual thing. Especially the spiritual thing. So as we walk through our life, God always intended that we would have relationship with him. And even though we have access to the throne, that we have a conversation with Jesus to go, what's your perspective on this? Holy Spirit, what am I looking at? Tell me the truth and help me to understand what you see so that I am in alignment with you instead of us trying to make our own righteousness and go, God, you come down to me right here. Well, you're going to be waiting all day, right? And yes. When we look at 1 John, it tells us that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. So that means the opposite of if we're not praying according to his will, he does not hear us. So Mm -hmm. he's not even paying attention to that. Right? Yes, mommy. Okay. So just keeping ourselves on the perspective of we have such a loving God and a loving father who has provided everything that we need. We should rely on him in every way, shape, and form and do what he has put in our care and responsibility to do and to follow through on it and enjoy the relationship that he's given us in the fullness and the way that he wants it to come forth. God knows everything that he desires. And um, something else you said, the tearing of the veil was not God being him reacting to Christ being crucified and angry. Ah, I'm going to tear it in half. Ah, I'm mad. That's, it's That's no different him. than what he did in the, for the Red Sea. He parted it and gave them now a way forward. Pathway. But as humans, we look at something like that, and even their account was, oh, he must have been God. And people writing, oh, the angry God and all those kind of things. No, God is working his plan. And that was God going, yep, now I'm enacting the next phase. And here is a natural demonstration so you guys can understand mm-hmm. more so what is already happening. That should have been a clue to them, but they looked at it and came to a different conclusion, right? And yes, they were concerned with Elijah, who had no power to do anything in who, and of who himself. Who, in fact, himself is a man with a nature like ours and means he also needed a savior. Absolutely. He did not ride his own chariot to heaven. The Lord came and picked him up and said, it's time to go. 
He, he did not have a heaven, yes. Yes. his own heaven with which to go to. Mm-hmm. So just keeping God first, forefront, and relying and trusting on him in everything and doing what he's given us to do, what he's charged us to do is vital in our lives. Amen. Well, there's a lot there. So I'm going to give you time to seek the Lord on that. To read out and study the scriptures for yourself and allow the Lord through his Holy Spirit to minister to you. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for this time in your word, Lord. We thank you for the grace that you've shown us and the mercy, Lord. We thank you for the understanding that we've gained in the wisdom, Lord, through your word, Lord, both spoken and written, Lord. And we just ask that you'll continue to guide us, Lord, that you'll continue to show us more of your character, Lord, that you'll give us everything that we need to go on and be victorious, Lord, because you already said that you would, Lord. And we take it by faith because you've already given it, Lord. And we trust you and we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.